are designed to be close to invisible to radar and weapon systems, the epitome of stealth. But their arrival in the UK was understandably the opposite, a chance to show off four of the new multi-million pound jets as they flew in from the US. They'd set off from the base they've been training at in South Carolina and flew thousands of miles crossing the Atlantic. It took around nine hours and was such a long journey they needed to be refueled during the flight. And then, finally, the moment arrived. As the crowds gathered, it was time to get the first glimpse. The pilots were clearly delighted to be the first to arrive, but were full of praise for the whole team. Well, it's a great moment. We're very pleased to be back. The, the clouds parted as we came over the UK and we could uh, start to see our home base from the air for the first time. Um, it, I must say that there's been a lot of work that's gone into us being here, a number of years of work, both with the Marines and from, uh, from the UK side over in America to enable us to be here. Also from within the squadron, uh, the engineering support uh, has been fantastic to get us here. So we may be the pilots that have arrived here today, but there's been a lot of people to, to enable us getting here. It was a really great flight today. Yeah, the, uh, the weather was nice. It was favourable all the way across, uh, all the way across the Atlantic, and uh, actually quite enjoyable. And certainly, you know, coming into the into the overhead of RAF Marham and landing here for the first time, a really a really special moment. How does it compare to, to flying in, in, in other jets? Uh, it's it's different to other jets in many ways, but the the basics of just crossing the Atlantic Ocean are, are the same for all of them, really. What's the mood like back in South Carolina? Because of course you're the first of uh, of many to we're going to have five more coming over by the end of August, aren't we? Uh, yeah, so people are very excited over at Beaufort. They, you know, they're keen to get back here and to get on with uh, the initial operating capability workup that we've got coming. So lots of excitement over in Beaufort and lots of good support from the Marines to get the jets ready. For years we've been told that these jets are the future of the RAF and the Royal Navy and the arrival of these first four F-35s is a key milestone. Five more will arrive by the end of August. The advanced warplanes will conduct missions and operations from the Royal Navy's Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carriers. They will be flown by RAF and Royal Navy pilots from the newly reformed 617 Squadron, the Dambusters. It's an iconic squadron and uh, part of the RAF 100 um, uh, celebrations are about commemoration and looking back and thinking about our history. But we also need to look forward and what I really hope is 617 Squadron can build on that heritage, look forward and develop F-35 into a world-beating next generation combat air capability. But when will they be fully operational? Will they be by the end of the year? That's their plan, is by the end of uh, this year we'll have our initial operational capability. Uh, we'll be working up towards that point. That will include operating uh, with the uh, aircraft carrier HMS Queen Elizabeth and we're aiming to have a full carrier strike capability by 2020. And when will they be on the new aircraft carriers? So we'll see the first of the F-35s actually conducting uh, landing trials and uh, uh, later this year off the eastern seaboard of the United States. Uh, and then we expect to see the first of the operational development uh, start next autumn. Uh, and then, as the Chief of the Air Staff has just said, we'll be doing the full, first full operational workup through 2020. The government has pledged to buy a total of 138 jets. But with the first 48 costing more than £9 billion, and with mounting budget pressures as defence spending is under review, will the 138 be fully met? And will they all be F-35Bs? There have been some suggestions, some might be F-35As. In terms of the actual nature of the balance, that's still to be decided. And as you know, we're going through the modernising defence programme at this point in time, so there'll be decisions to be made. It's not clear what this chapter will hold, but the jet's arrival marks a new era for Britain's air power. After years in the planning, RAF Marham is now home of the Lightning Force.